Before sharing the biblical proof that exposes the anti-Pauline movement, you need to know that all of them that claim Paul is a false apostle do in fact claim Peter is a legitimate apostle. That being the case, notice what Peter says about Paul here. It's in 2 Peter 3, verses 13 to 15. He says, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent, that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Those claiming Paul a false apostle need prayer, because they simply do not study the word of God as it is written, for they are clearly unlearned and unstable as they twist the scriptures unto their own destruction. I mean, the simple reality here is this. Those that claim Paul is a false apostle cannot have it both ways. They claim Paul is a false apostle, while at the same time declare Peter's legit. For in so doing proves they are in grave error and confusion. Their rebellion against God's truth in the epistle shows they have not the wisdom necessary to understand that which is written. For the Lord our God would never grant wisdom unto those that hate it. And another obvious fact here is that in order for their claims against Paul to remain legit, they would also have to claim Peter is a false apostle since he clearly acknowledges Paul as a man blessed of God who was given wisdom from God to write the epistles. Well, as I have proven in this video last month, the Vatican is the main power behind this anti-Pauline movement. These long prophesied fanatics for Roman theology that sanction being saved in sin instead of from sin do this because Paul outs their false doctrines. And because they embrace a creed over the word of God, as Isaiah chapter 4 verse 1 said, most churches will do in these last days, they cannot understand the word of God due to a foundation based on disbelief, and so they have no choice but to run with their apostate leaders in what they say instead. For example, most Christians keep Sunday holy without a single Bible verse to back up their doctrine, and so they also have no choice but to echo the admitted Vatican traditions of the popes simply because they are not able to understand the truth about the law's eternal permanence, unless they have Christ as true Savior, wherein he literally promised to write the law in their hearts. And so the next time someone tells you Paul was a false apostle, ask them if they believe Peter was a true apostle. They will, of course, say yes. And when they do that, show them 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 13 to 15, and I am sure you will have a blessed opportunity that day to help a dear soul out of danger. And by the way, the reason Peter says the other scriptures here in this passage is because he literally highlights the other books of the Bible to lend credence onto Paul's epistles. The fact Peter mentions Paul's epistles first, and then the other scriptures, confirms this. Some may twist this to give credence onto the Vatican's Apocrypha, but those with eyes that see cannot be confused by all the pagan dogma in the Apocryphal books. Hence the reason Peter says what he did in verse 17, which was, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. And so the question is, why? Why do some still continue on with their lies about Paul? Well, like Rome, they do it for the numbers. What I mean is, the popes of Rome know the overwhelming majority of the churches embrace Vatican dogma as if they're truth. And especially now, since, as also prophesied, all the world wanders after the beast in Rome. They also think that because the obedient remnant people are so small in number, they assume next to no one will out them in their false theology. And so they go with the odds here that their lies will never see the light of truth exposing them. Like Rome, those in the anti-Pauline movement think they can win this war against God's truth by the sheer size of their army of false shepherds. Well, that being the case, I have to ask, 
How well did it work out for Goliath? Thank you for watching. God bless.